Operation Husky was the code name for the Allied invasion of Sicily. It was a large amphibious and airborne maneuver followed by land campaign under United States and British command. On July 10, 1943, the RCR was part of the 1st Canadian Army Corps, which landed at Pacino, southern Sicily. Somewhat overshadowed by other operations conducted during the Second World War, Operation Husky was the beginning of the Italian campaign, which led to the collapse of the fascist Italian regime and to pushing the Germans out of Italy two years later. And I got to say that probably by the end of the first day, there was some semblance of organization. And we had done some things. One of our men, um, by the name of Grigas, took over a group that was trying to put Bangalore torpedoes up in front of a, uh, a regular gun placement. And uh, the section leader got killed. And Grigas took it over. And he crawled up and dropped a couple of grenades in through the... Through the uh, Weather. These silk maps were issued en route to Sicily to Captain Sheridan Atkinson of the RCR. Atkinson served as ship's adjutant on the freighter Orestes, which transported the RCR's anti-tank platoon to Sicily. Such maps came with a polished metal rectangle as part of an escape kit, which also included first aid and food supplies in the shape of pills or concentrates to allow the individual maximum chances of survival. After landing, the regiment spent more than a month on the island of Sicily. During the campaign, the RCR lost both the deputy commanding officer, Major Pope, and the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Crow, both depicted in this photograph. It was taken on 17 July 1943, the day before Major Pope was killed in Val Guarnera while leading an attack on the Germans. We lost our colonel. We lost a 2IC on the 17th of July and our colonel on the 24th of July. And that's where I stopped because I got hit in the same, uh, the same uh, exercise that he got killed in. On 24 July 1943, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Crow led an ill-fated attack on Nisoria Ridge. While attempting to re-establish contact with three of his four companies, Crow and his party ran into an enemy position. Struck by a machine gun bullet, Crow seized a rifle and engaged the enemy until a second bullet ended his life. His medals, on loan from Michael O'Leary collection, are part of our Second World War gallery. Private Ralph Bauman kept a diary while a prisoner of war from October 1943 to May 1945. Member of the RCR from St. Catharines, Ontario, Bauman was captured during Operation Husky. Subsequently, he spent time and was held in several POWs camps in Austria, Germany and Poland. His diary includes recollections, original poems, and sketches from his time as a prisoner. The Italian campaign, led by the United States 7th Army and the British 8th Army, continued until 1945. The Allies encountered fierce resistance from the enemy. The RCR advanced north with the 1st Canadian Infantry Division.
Their direct enemy were German paratroopers deployed as land troops at that point in the war. German paratrooper uniform and equipment, including a camouflage smock, helmet, ammunition pouch with magazines, loader for the MP40 submachine gun, badges, and a ribbon bar. German paratroopers, Fallschirmjäger, were part of the German Air Force Luftwaffe, but after taking heavy casualties in jumps on Belgium, the Netherlands, and Crete, they were largely employed as ground forces. In September 1943, the RCR crossed to the Italian mainland at Reggio di Calabria. Alongside the other units in the 1st Canadian Army Corps, they fought in key engagements such as the Moro River Valley near Ortona, 20-28 December 1943. By the time the city fell into Allies' hands, the RCR had lost 550 men, killed, wounded, missing or prisoners of war, out of the 746 on strength at the beginning of the campaign. The Ortona Toast is a well-known regimental tradition named after the Italian coastal city, stronghold of the German paratroopers who opposed fierce resistance before and after Christmas 1943. During this time, more precisely on the 21st of December, the regiment was marking their Diamond Jubilee. In the absence of port to toast this milestone, a new drink was quickly improvised, water, sugar and ration rum. Until March 1945, the United States 7th Army and the British 8th Army, including the 1st Canadian Army, encountered fierce resistance from the enemy. The RCR advanced north with the 1st Canadian Infantry Division. In May 1944, they were engaged in breaking a German defense line 145 kilometers south of Rome. Known as the Gustav Line, this German defense crossed the Liri River Valley and had several enemy strongholds. Here, the RCR was engaged in Operation Diadem, ending on 24 May 1944 with the capture of Ponte Corvo by the Allies. This was an important step towards taking Rome on the Italian front, while the Allied invasion of Europe in Normandy was undergoing its last preparations. After the fall of Rome into Allied hands, the Gothic line proved to be very difficult to breach. At that point, the 8th British Army was committed to maintain the offensive in Italy in the hope that the enemy will collapse quickly. In August-September 1944, the RCR saw important assaults south of Rimini, same year in December they had advanced to Lamone River. The Germans withdrew north of the river behind broken bridges, deep waters and rapid stream. At nightfall on 4 December 1944, a reconnaissance mission of the chosen crossing points was led by Lieutenant Joyce. He drowned, the points proved unaffordable due to the depth of the water, and the decision to use boats for the crossing was, was made. Operation Gold Flake was the code name for redirecting the 1st Canadian Corps from Italy to northwestern Europe in order to reunite with the 1st Canadian Army in March 1945. At that time, after successfully landing in Normandy, the Allies' objective was to force Germans back to the east of Rhine River. The British 2nd Army and the 1st Canadian Army, as elements of the British 21st Army Group, commanded by Field Marshal Montgomery, were dispatched to the northern flank of the Western Front. 
Canadians covered Belgium and the Netherlands. The RCR reached Antwerp in March 1945, then marched to Holland. Between 12 and 17 April, they were engaged in the capture of Appledore. Germany officially capitulated on 8 May 1945. Three days before, in Wageningen, Netherlands, General Johannes Blaskowitz, commander of the 25th German Army, surrendered to the Allies represented by General Charles Fox, commander of the 1st Canadian Army Corps. Under the terms of the capitulation, 25,000 Canadians on site were responsible to disarm 130,000 Germans. Considered capitulated troops, the Germans were in charge of their own logistics. They also had to deactivate 2 million mines placed on the Dutch coasts. Canadian troops watched over the Dutch population, deprived at the time not only of liberty but also of food. Individuals or official authorities recognized Canadians and other Allied troops as their liberators. Their recognition takes many forms, from annual events featuring veterans' parades that mark the date of the Allies' arrival in their community, to published books or allegorical monuments erected in city squares, such as the Man with Two Hats, a monument by Dutch artist Hank Wisch unveiled in Appledore in 2000 and in Ottawa in 2002. During the Second World War, Canadian military casualties included 55,000 wounded and over 44,000 dead, 24,525 killed while serving in the army. In Italy, the Moro River Military Cemetery counts 1,357 plots of Canadian casualties. There are many more military cemeteries with Canadian casualties in Italy. In France, Belgium and Holland, Canadians are buried in over 140 military cemeteries, some already existing since the First World War, others created during or post Second World War. On the island of Hong Kong, the Taiwan War Memorial lists 228 Canadian names with unknown graves. Another 175 Canadians are buried in the adjacent cemetery, some of them unidentified. Bravery was rewarded, including 182 Victoria Cross medals approved, 12 of them to Canadian servicemen. 130 awards for gallantry and distinguished service were issued to members of the RCR. Under the British Commonwealth Honours and Awards system, nine different campaign stars were awarded for operational service in different theatres, alongside the Defence Medal and the 1939-1945 War Medal. In addition, each Dominion established their own campaign medal. For Canada, it was the Canadian Volunteer Service Medal. 